It's a great honor to be here again. I've been here many times before and uh, I have delivered various presentations and today I will be very, very short addressing the question about precautionary principles because they are many out in society and in real life. And um, Tom Butler, a professor in Ireland in information systems, have said that children are at growing risk of present and future ill health from wireless technology due to weak governments, captured government departments and agencies, corrupt institutions, a compliant press, and unethical or ignorant academics. You have shown today both the eminent speakers as well as everyone being here today uh, that you are not part of this quote. Uh, you are actually forming a very special town and surrounding here in Krakow and maybe you should break loose from Poland and form your own country, a very healthy country I would say, and I salute you for it. Thank you. As you know, recently the American Senator Richard Blumenthal, he asked the American authorities as well as the operators in the United States what kind of proofs they had for safety regarding 5G. And it turned out that they were not aware of any independent scientific studies on safety of 5G at all. Uh, and that means that the citizens must use and form a precautionary principle of their own making. And as a matter of fact, if he had asked about 4G, 3G, 2G, 1G, and all other forms of electromagnetic exposures that we nowadays consider normal and natural, which they are not, of course, the answer would have been the same. Uh, we just don't have any proofs for safety when it boils down to these matters. And that means that from the current vast scientific literature, it's obvious we must proceed with caution before immersing the citizens in more and more artificial electromagnetic fields. This is, of course, extra important for the current and coming generations, uh, children, teenagers, and not yet born children in the future. And we may, as a matter of fact, already be gravely endangering our current as well as coming generations. And the question is, will we have a post-cautionary principle effect? Uh, Pre actually mentioned the rather grim future possibility regarding mankind. I hope she is wrong, of course, that everyone will survive, everyone will be happy, and there will be no effects. But maybe they are just around the corner. And to not act today may prove a disaster tomorrow, and such lack of action may again result in the classical late lessons from early warnings, or even too late lessons. There are indications that maybe we should have done things already, already years before today's meeting. And I hope again that scientists pointing to those possibilities are wrong, of course. As you already have heard, the World Health Organization, they have cancer classified radio frequent magnetic fields already in 2001, 2002, radio frequency, electromagnetic fields, 2011, as possibly carcinogenic. And the Council of Europe said, ban mobile phones and wireless networks in schools, and they concluded that immediate action was required to protect children, thus a far stronger call than any precautionary principle. What happened in Sweden? Well, I think it was the same which happened in Poland. Nothing. It's odd, you know, that the politicians and civil servants having their hand on this red button do not react to what the Council of Europe says. And for me as a scientist, being part of this kind of discussions, 
it feels sometimes a little bit meaningless to perform all this research since it doesn't seem to impact people in power. You are an elegant exception. Uh, your uh, city council here, your politicians, civil servants, they do react, but mostly people don't. They just don't give a toss. And I have to point out that among all the pictures presented today, there are no reductions or bans in Brussels, Switzerland, or Salzburg. These are just uh, news in newspapers. But in reality, you can use your cell phone wherever you go. They follow ICNIRP, or in the United States, Canada, and so on, IEEE. Uh, so there are no real ex um, uh, reductions in exposure. The <clears throat> cancer classification is interesting because that means that parents put their children in the same type of exposure to B as you would have had from DDT, lead, formaldehyde, petrol and diesel exhaust, welding smoke and so on. When I ask parents, do you want to put your child in a room filled with welding smoke or petrol and diesel exhausts, they look at me and say, are you crazy? What are you talking about? We would never do that as a mother and father. Uh, but actually they do. The smoke is just power frequent and radio frequent fields. The children are constantly exposed to this, a 2B carcinogen. When I tell parents this, they go nuts. And they say, why were we not informed? Here in Krakow, they are. But in other countries, cities, towns, villages around the world, they are not. Uh, and therefore, the information leaking out from this meeting is extremely important. Swedes love their children. I'm sure you do the same. And in Sweden, children are clad with reflective vests, colorful overalls, protective helmets, bicycle helmets. But it comes to the effect of wireless radiation, they are completely naked. And that is strange. And again, you are moving ahead. Uh, you are showing the world that this is very important. And Stella, in her presentation, summarized exactly what you need to start to do. Thank you for that. So do not believe that mobile phones iPads, Wi-Fi are safe, they are not. And as you soon will see, the major players in our society already know it. These gadgets and their electromagnetic fields interfere with normal brain function, learning and memory, fertility, cancer risks, and have been shown to shatter the DNA in cells. All of this can be found in peer-reviewed scientific journals, but until now has not been in the public domain. Among all the scientific literature databases, I just pick one, namely EMF Portal in Germany, and if you would allow me to lecture 10 minutes per paper in that literature database, 24-7, I would continue for t more than 28 weeks. So when authorities say, no, there are no proofs for effects, they just lie to you. They have their own precautionary principle, and they follow another strategy. But you have seen through it, so you are not impressed, of course. You have already seen this. I will not go through it again. I just point to that genotoxic effects are seen after as short as one day and one night, 24 hours, at an exposure level, a SAR level of 1.3 watts per kilogram. And you remember that in Poland you should withstand 2 watts per kilogram. Many scientists have shown effects that are below, below, very much below or extremely much below the 2 watts per kilogram. Uh, and the one leading the contest, if you call it like that, is 100,000 times below the current safety recommendation. So 
with all due respect, when you talk about seven volts per meter, that will not do the trick. You need to go further down and very much below that. And I will come back to it. So we must live with the realization that science has demonstrated that acute or chronic exposure very well below current official guidelines to radi wireless radiation is harmful. Federal human exposure guidelines are decades out of date and are only concerned with one single six or 10 minute or in some instances 30 minute exposure of thermal type in fluid filled plastic dolls in an otherwise radiation free environment. As you know, real life non-thermal events, as Barbara has measured, uh, they are um, 100,000 times below these guidelines during constant 24-7 exposure load year after year. For me, it's uh, <clears throat> surprising that authorities are even allowed to reflect technical measurements and technical guidelines as being some form of biomedical protective guideline. And in all due respect, ICNIP has pointed out that their guidelines were never meant to be used for biology or medicine. And that they were sorry to see that other authorities had adopted them in a wrong way. And as we have said, children are more vulnerable to environmental exposures than adults. They depend on us to protect them, and the effects are much more devastating for society. You know, if I drop dead now, that doesn't mean anything. The world will continue, but if we harm our children today, that could mean devastating effects in the future. And I don't have time today to go through all the research, but I've already done it in this room before. You know already what happens with future generations, uh, impacts on sperm cells, egg cells, fertility, and so forth. And always remember this about guideline recommendations. ICNIRP and the World Health Organization recommendation for Poland is 9 million microwatts per square meter. And it's based on a paper from 1998. The odd thing was that the year before, 1997, at a meeting at the trade union in Stockholm, I proposed that the only genuine hygienic safe limit bound by law would be the natural background. And the natural background for 1,800 megahertz is this, 0 0.0001 microwatts per square meter. And I was extremely surprised the year after 1998 to see that the ICNIP organization came forward suggesting that a quintillion times higher would be safe. If their guideline is safe, then I am a fish, I could tell you. That's just no way. Just imagine if you would raise the outdoor temperature a quintillion times higher. That's a one with 18 zeros behind. Then even the rock would run like water, everything would melt. So something is very odd here. And the good thing with a hygienic safe limit is that it's bound by law. The recommendations are not bound by law. Uh, they're just indications of what you should do. You don't end up in jail if you um, go above the recommendations. So finally, what are we doing about it and what are others up to? Well, <clears throat> 1983, and that's a long time ago, I coined an expression which is used very much around the world, namely this is the largest full-scale experiment ever. What happens when we, 24 hours around the clock, wherever we are, allow ourselves and our children to be used as guinea pigs 
whole body irradiated, and at colossal, astronomical, biblical exposure levels for the rest of our lives. When I travel around the world, I very rarely get an answer to this simple question. But sometimes people do talk about, for instance, the precautionary principle. Um, like in the Benevento Resolution from 2006, it was repeated in the London Resolution, again pointing to the, the need to use the precautionary principle. Uh, <clears throat> And what is it? Well, you have heard already today uh, that this is a paramount uh, um, principle enshrined in the European Union law. Uh, but still, 5D is and 1D to 4D was rolled out without any form of pre-marketing testing, due diligence, or strategic health and environmental assessments, thus completely flaunting the precautionary principle. It was rolled out as an untested technology without independent health or environmental impact assessments. Uh, that is not only irresponsible from a moral ethical point of view, it's also a breach of human rights, the Nuremberg Code, and goes against the action of informed consent enshrined in the United Nations law. I have started my own institute since a few years back, uh, I have the Institute of Common Sense for Common Sense. Many biological and biomedical questions do not need very much thinking before you sort of envisage, you feel the answer. It's somewhere around the corner. And it doesn't take much to realize that to increase the amount of artificial electromagnetic radiation exponentially within a few decades will have harmful biological and medical effects. It is not rocket science, really. And to support that, as Preet pointed out and other speakers, there is today an enormous amount of original research articles, book chapters, conference proceedings, meeting reports, abstracts, and it goes back as far as the 1950s. Already then, actually, people were very well aware of that, for instance, microwaves and life doesn't blend together very well. But they didn't see that a few decades later on, we would change our societies into a microwave-based communication system. And as you have also heard, the precautionary principle in real life is happening, not only in Krakow, but also like in France, Nigeria, the Solomon Islands, Uganda, and so on. But you know, I have a lot of prejudice because I ask myself, what about the rest of Poland and Sweden, for instance? Uh, and I always believe that Sweden is kind of better than Nigeria, the Solomon Islands, and Uganda. But we are not. They are ahead of us. We don't have any bans in Swedish schools. We don't have any lowering of the maximum recommended public exposure, and nothing like that. And for me, it's odd, of course. But there are another type of precautionary principle, and that is a principle used by the real powerful players, namely the World Health Organization, the radiation protection authorities, the telecom operators, the telecom manufacturers, and all the world's insurance and reinsurance companies. They have abandoned ship many, many years ago. They do not in any legal form take responsibility for these safe gadgets. I was at a meeting in London 2002. There were representatives, for instance, of Lloyd's UK, Reassurance, which is the largest reinsurance company from Switzerland, and a small Swedish company called Ifscandia. And they were all completely outspoken and said for them it was not the question whether it was dangerous or not. They know and knew that it was extremely dangerous. 
The only question for them was, who is going to pay for this in the future, when all the health damages should be covered? And they said, we won't do it. We will never do that. And therefore, in their policies, policies in their legislative work and so on, they have written that no, they do not take any form of responsibility. And I tell you, from the Institute of Common Sense for Common Sense, that's more telling than any test tube, mouse or rat I could show you. You have the answer already there. You don't need to think any further. You don't need to measure anything or discuss any levels of exposure because they have already done the thinking for you. And this is what I call a real precautionary principle in contrast to all these other variants. So only <clears throat> uh, the only correct answer to my question is no more full-scale experimentation until they climb on board again to cover any form of future legal liability claims. When will we see a moratorium based on the precautionary principle for the sake of humans, animals, plants, and bacteria, and for their and our common future? When will we all start listening to all the scientists, to all the people that are concerned about the future and our current situation, and maybe even to me. So think about listening very carefully. And here in Krakow, you actually do listen. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>